Harry, today's topic is going to be on the Apostle Paul and his timeline, and he's also known as Saul. We will read that throughout this. We're going to start off in Acts chapter 9, verse 3 to 6. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Saul's conversion, very, very hard. Jesus' message, Saul, you are my enemy. Saul was a man of God, yet fighting against God. How did that happen? Saul was thoroughly educated in Jewish faith by their best teacher, Gamaliel, had a PhD in theology in the Jewish religion. Eight years earlier, John the Baptist had started preaching, and then Jesus came along, the awaited Messiah. Saul's people had rejected Jesus because Jesus had not been nice to them and given them the, the respect that they had expected. Four years ago, Saul's people had crucified Jesus, but the Jewish, but the Jesus people would not quit. They were teaching the public that Jesus was alive again, a new religion had come from this teaching. Saul and his people were determined to destroy this problem. Now Jesus himself had spoken to Saul, you are wrong. Horrified, Saul, blinded, does not eat or drink for three days. Could you read verse 17 to 19, please? Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Jesus had forgiven him. Saul had acted in blind faith to his old tradition. Now he realized that Jesus was real. How wonderful to be corrected and forgiven. Saul knew all the prophecies from Deuteronomy, Isaiah, Psalms, and so on. After all, he had a PhD in that religion, and now he had met the Messiah himself. Praise God. Could you read Galatians 1, 17 to 24? I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that what I am writing you is no lie. Then I went to Syria and Cilicia. I was personally unknown <clears throat> to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. Paul explains the details of his past conversion. Uh, converted to Damascus, then to the desert of Arabia for three years. Down to Damascus, then Jerusalem, rejected by all. Could you read Acts 9, 26 to 30, please? When he came up to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and the Lord had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. When the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus. Off to Tarsus. So when did Saul's, Paul's ministry really start? History timeline for Paul is this. Paul converted on the road to Damascus about 34 AD, four years after Jesus ascended. Paul, then Paul said he was three years in the desert, then to Jerusalem, Caesarea, and off to Tarsus, his hometown where he was raised. Acts 11, 25 and 6, Barnabas invites, invites Paul into ministry in Antioch. The year is 44, according to the experts. Ten years since Jesus spoke to him on the road to Damascus. 
no career, no life, no family, waiting on the call to serve Jesus, making tents to feed himself, women's work, had a PhD in theology that was now obsolete. Imagine visiting with Paul while he was waiting. What are you waiting for, Paul? Jesus, Jesus call, he says. How long do you still have to wait? Six months, six years? No idea. You sure Jesus is real, still wants you? Paul was being tested and prepared for the battle ahead. Waiting is hard. Paul passed the test. Years later, Paul told the Corinthians, test yourself to see if you're in the faith. If Jesus Christ is in you, you pass. Then waiting is okay because God has a plan. Amen, Harry. And what do you think we should take away from this then? Yeah, a lot of hard time just waiting for Jesus, waiting for things to come together. So many people come to the faith and think great things are going to happen. The great thing is just waiting on him. Paul waited 10 years from the time he was called, the greatest apostle in the Bible, as you might say, in terms of what his outreach. And yet he had to wait and wait and wait some more. And then he was ready. And was he ready? Amen. Thanks a lot for that, Harry. Thank you.